Hey guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel. Welcome to my channel. Peter likes books. Not Peter loves books, because Peter loves books was not available. And everybody always says to me, it's available, it's available. It's, well, it wasn't at the time, and I don't know if it was Twitter or what was it, something, but I wanted my name to be the same across the board. And something that I was looking up, Peter Loves Books wasn't available, so I went with Peter Likes Books. And I do like books, but I really love books, so anyway, it doesn't really matter. Today, we're going to talk about a book, because it's a book, this is book two, and that's what we do over here, right? If you want something else, I got four other channels, go check them out. But anyway, I started The Devouring Grey last night, because everybody in the world is talking about this book. I'm not really so sure what I think about it yet. I'm listening to it on an Audible, and I'm like, do you ever just have an itch you can't get rid of? But anyway, I'm like 45 minutes into it. And, uh, I'm like 45 minutes into it, and it's pretty good. It honestly is, but it totally reminds me of a CW show. So if you like CW shows, you'll love The Devouring Grey. I'm not a huge fan of CW shows. They're okay. I don't dislike them or anything like that. But it's very Sabrina Teenage Witch kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, it just kind of reminds me of that. But if that's what you like, you'll probably love it. I mean, it is young adult. Um, and I think it's going to get better as it goes on. I'm kind of very fascinated with the, uh, what do you call it, with the characters at this point. So, it does seem good to me, but it's very that, you know, like, small New York town in the fall, I think, they don't really say, and the trees, and there's, like, hidden feelings in the woods, and it's a, you know, little town square, and then they move, this people move back. It reminds me of this, uh show I saw back in the day, and it was with the girl that played the second Becky on Roseanne. I can't remember what the show was called, but it was called something like, I, We Know Who You Are, or something like that. And it was about this girl that comes back, and her and her mom moved there from California, and she's a witch, and they're all witches, and they think that, it, like, they moved to Salem. Do you remember this? That's what it reminds me of. But they, you're not here for this. You're here for Evelyn Hugo, aren't you, okay? So let's get into The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, because that is what today's video is about. Before I get into my review on whether this was the greatest book in the entire world or whether it was totally crap, and if you've watched my vlog, then you know exactly how I feel about this book, I would like to put up the cover right here and read you a little bit of the description. Aging and reclusive Hollywood movie icon, front and center, Evelyn Hugo is finally ready to tell the truth about her glamorous and scandalous life. But when she chooses unknown magazine reporter Monique Grant for the job, no one is more astounded than Monique herself. Why her? Why now? Monique is not exactly on top of the world. Her husband has left her and her professional life is going nowhere. Regardless of why Evelyn has selected her to write her biography, Monique is, de is determined to use this opportunity to jumpstart her career. Summoned to Evelyn's luxurious apartment, Monique listens to fascination as the actress tells her story. From making her way to Los Angeles in the 1950s to her decision to leave show business in the 1980s, and, or 80s, and of course, the seven husbands along the way, Evelyn and Spools a tale of ruthless ambition, unexpected friendship, and a great forbidden love. Monique begins to feel a very real connection to the legendary star, but as Evelyn's story nears its conclusion, it becomes clear that her life intersects, intersects with Monique's own in tragic and irreversible ways. Written with Reed's signature talent for creating complex, likable characters, real simple, this is a, I don't know what that means. This is a mesmerizing journey through the splendor of old Hollywood into the harsh realities of the present day as two women struggle with what it means and what it costs to face the truth. Okay, I don't really know how to do this review, you guys. Um without giving spoilers, so I'm just going to kind of talk about it at the beginning, and then at the end, I'm going to do some spoilers, and if you guys want to leave, you can leave, okay? First of all, I just want to say that what my expectations were of reading this book when I went into it, and what my what I got out of it when I left were two completely really different things. Um, without giving anything away, on many, many different levels, this is a very, very important book. Um, it is not just a work of fiction. It is really, you live this woman's life, and um, it takes you from her being in the Hell's, uh, being in Hell's Kitchen, New York, in uh, the 1950s, and being in a very, very toxic home environment, to what she does to get herself back to Hollywood to become a star. And it's very deliberate, and it's very calculated, and it's all at the beginning of the book, so I'm not ruining anything for you. Um, she's very smart. Probably one of the smartest characters I've ever read as an empowered woman. And the thing is, is that she even talks about how, like, it, it on, on so many different levels, okay, the book addresses you know, ethnicity, and it addresses gender, and it addresses age, and it addresses sexuality, and it addresses all of these issues that are so, so important, um, and I just didn't expect that going into this book. I really, really, really didn't expect that, and uh, the thing is, okay, when you start reading this book, you really think it's going to be about Monique, and you really think it's going to, who's the reporter, and you think it's going to be about um, finding out, like, why she was picked for this, which you do find out in the book. I will say that. I don't want to just leave that out there. 
I have to say, what happens with her being picked, I really did not see until like the last, like I didn't see it, I would say, until like pages before it happened, if that makes sense, um, on why she picked her. And like all of the evidence is pretty much kind of there for you at a certain point in the book. You, you really couldn't figure it out before then. But at the end, I like, even when certain things happen, I, I didn't connect, if that makes sense. So anyway, um, and so when it happens, the writer, she's so fantastic. Uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid is one of the most fantastic authors. Uh, maybe the top five, ten authors of our generation. I, I really, really do believe this from this book. Now, I will tell you, my best friend just finished her uh, newest book, which is Daisy something, and she said it, it does not, it's not as good on any level as this one, but she said the characterization is fantastic. The characterization of Evelyn Hugo, who is this actress named Evelyn uh, Herrera, and uh, she's from Cuba, her, she's originally, her parents are from Cuba, and uh, so she's a Cuban-American, and she goes to Los Angeles to become a star. And it's really about forgetting her past and becoming like a new person and reinventing herself. It's about all of these friendships and relationships that she has along the way. And I have to say that back in the day when I was growing up and I would watch movies with my mom, like Alfred Hitchcock movies and, you know, all of the big movies that were made in Hollywood because my mother loved that era. And one of my mother's dreams was she wanted to be um, a costume designer and work for Edith Head. And Edith Head did all of those huge movies. And so that was one of my mom's dreams. So I grew up watching all of these movies, movies that are kind of like they never have like real names of the movies which is fantastic like they invent all of these movies and names of actresses that like never existed but were on. you kind of like know that they're like composites of people like Evelyn Hugo to me is very much like a composite of like Sophia Loren and um you know like Grace Kelly Catherine Hepburn Audrey Hepburn she's like a composite of like all these different actresses together and um which is, it's so well done. It, I mean, it is so well done. And like, I don't know how much she researched this, but the inner workings of how Hollywood really works today or how Hollywood worked in the 50s to the 80s is so intriguing to me because there's a lot of things that like I didn't really know that like how that was how it happened. But what is interesting about it, okay, is when you're reading it, it doesn't read as like the 50s or the 60s. It reads as if you're like reading an article about, uh, let's say like Amy Schumer and Jennifer Lawrence being like best friends and like what's going on, but then what's really going on behind the scenes, if that makes sense. And you know, like what things are contrived and what things are made up and what things are fake just for the paparazzi. And it discusses a lot of that, but it feels very current when she's telling her story. So the book goes back and forth. It goes between Monique's life, which I would say is probably about literally Early five to ten percent of the book, not even that much probably, and then it uh, the other ninety percent is Evelyn's life, and it's her literally just telling the story of her life. And I didn't really think that I would be that interested in it. I was, I, you guys, I just could not stop listening to this book on Audible. The Audible version is fantastic, by the way. I just want to say, I know a lot of people ask me like, should I listen to it on Audible? Whatever. It's two different actresses doing it, and it's so well done. Um, this book will be made into a movie. I actually think I just read an article that said that the movie rights were bought to it. What's interesting is when you read this, okay, is that it, it will be very interesting to see who plays the part of Evelyn Hugo because, um, like I said that to my friend Tanya, and Tanya said Jane Fonda, and I said, no. I said, it has to be somebody that's, uh, like, you know, Latin American because it, that is such a big part of the book. And, um, you know, there are several older actresses out there that, you know, could play the part. So it'll be very interesting or if they just pick somebody randomly, which I think would be fantastic too. Somebody that, like, not randomly, but, you know, like a new actress that we've never heard of that is, like, older in life. I, like, a some stage actress out there that we don't know in movies. I think that would be so great. The movie, this book has to be a movie. It has to. It's a book about movies. It has to be a movie. And when you're reading it, it is so visual. It is absolutely one of the most... I was talking to somebody, and they said, I love the story, and I love the characters, but I didn't think it was written very well. And I was like, what? Like, this is maybe some of the most fantastic, fantastic dialogue I have ever read in my entire life. Absolutely, hands down, some of the most fantastic dialogue. Some of the nuances that are written, are just passages... There's a passage when a character, there, there's a lot of, I'm not ruining anything because a lot of characters die in this book, okay? So just get your Kleenex out. But there is a passage when, and it's, it's a pretty prominent character, um, passes away in the book. And they're talking about uh, the wind blowing in off the ocean and the smell of the salt in the ocean taking over like the, the sickness in the room. It is so fantastically written. I literally rewound it like three times just to listen to it because I, I was like, this is literally like poetry within a novel. It is, 
it is so well, I mean, and it's just, it, you almost don't even notice it after a while because it's just so often. It's just flooded through, but not in a way that it takes away from the storytelling. The storytelling is just fantastic. It is probably one of the best books I have read in the last five years. Literally, if not, if not the best book I have read in the last five years. Um, it is so important. And you guys know, like for me, so I'll rate a book on like five stars, but like I also give it a per percentage rate. Like, let's say if it's a book that I really enjoy and I think is fun, but I don't think there's like a huge message to it, I'll give it like a 90 to a 95, somewhere in there, right? But if the message is important, if what the book is about at its core, if the lesson that we learn from it, I give it from a 95 to 100. Like, I, that takes me through to 100. Because the book, and I think we read for many different levels or reasons. You know, we read to escape. We read because we just love to read. We love, we read to, you know, just hear about characters or storylines or whatever. And I do that too. I read a lot of books that really have no purpose other than just to in, entertain us. And I think that that has, you know, huge value of its own. And I think that's important. But to have a book that you enjoy and entertains you, but at the same level is important is unbelievable so if you've watched this far and you don't want me to spoil it for you if you have not seen it please don't watch the rest of this because it will ruin it for you i'm telling you it, it, i'm going to talk about some things that you don't expect coming up in the book um so please stop the video now thank you for watching this far but i want to talk about a couple things come back and watch it after you've read the book i think everybody should read this book i think it's for everybody okay so here's the spoiler part first of all if you've read the book i, I gave you fair warning okay um, the relationship between Celia and Evelyn Hugo, although it started early in the book, I did not see it coming. The fact, and I had just, like, I was talking about this in a vlog the other night, this idea of relationships that, like, this person that comes in and out of your life through your entire life, I thought it was so well done, okay? The parts where they addressed Stonewall in there, and that they were all in New York City wanting to do something and wanting to be out, but not being able to be out, wanting to be themselves and be liberated, but feeling afraid to lose everything they had was conveyed so beautifully and so well done. It might have been one of the finest coming out novels I have ever read in my entire life, if not the finest. And let me make something very, very clear. This is a coming out novel. It is absolutely 100% a coming out novel. The fact that Evelyn Hugo is bisexual is extremely important in this book. The fact that Evelyn Hugo is 79 years old addressing issues of, uh, you know, all kinds of, you know, she's talking about, you know, different gender issues. And she's talking about in there about cultural issues. And she's talking about the difference between being bisexual and being a lesbian or being gay and being pansexual. And she talks about all these issues in there. And it is so important. It is so, so important. The fact that she, they address in there that they can give their money to help organizations that will help people out there. I just was like, okay, this is such a message to people out there that are closeted. And because there are a lot of people that are closeted and I'm not a believer in outing somebody or telling people that they have to come out. I think that's a process that people have to do on their own. I thought it was, I thought this novel could really, really help somebody. I thought it was so well done. The scene when um, Evelyn is in her kitchen and she's talking to Louisa and she overhears Louisa's phone call and Louisa's speaking to her mother in Spanish and then Evelyn responds to her in Spanish and then she later talks about how afraid she is to speak in Spanish and then when they, uh, you know, when she is speaking Spanish between, you know, all of them together was so important, okay? That was such an important part of the novel because what she had to do was she had to give up any part of her cultural background and who she really was as a person and it was her taking back that and owning it and becoming that person again and it was it was so well done it was just so 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 well done and it was just so cool to see a latina woman represented in such a way in a novel that is considered literary fiction considered entertaining considered a story yes but there were so many powerful issues in it so i mean i just i was moved to tears on so many so many times um, I really, really felt like I knew her at the end of the book. And what I loved was at the end of the book, when Monique said, that, and I don't remember the, the, the exact point that she said, but it was at the very, very end when she said that she didn't like her very much, but that she, she said, I adore her on some level, or I respect her or something like that. And I think that is what you get at the very end. I loved that Evelyn said, tell them that I got it wrong. I'm not, Tell them that what was important to me were the people in my family. 
I thought that was so powerful, you know, and then tell them, that, and she said, and tell them that I don't need them to love me anymore. I haven't had a book move me in quite some time, and I will say that 2019 has been a year that I have been very, very blessed to read fantastic books. But this book moved me on a level that I cannot even explain. I have talked about this book at like length on my vlog. I recommended this book to so many people, and it is one of the most fantastic, beautifully written books, most powerful books, most important books that I have ever read in my entire life. And um, I just want to say that I think you guys should go read it if you haven't. And if I just spoiled it for you, it, trust me, I still will say that the thing, and I don't want to say anything about this in the book in case there's somebody out there that's going to watch it and end up reading it. The way that Monique finds out her connection to uh, Evelyn floored me. I was not surprised by Evelyn's behavior. Um, and I can understand Monique's anger as well. Um, but at the same time, I thought that it was done so well. I did not see it coming. And I thought that the way that the book handled the whole situation from the honesty of Monique, as well as the honesty of Evelyn and the respect that they had for each other, whether or not they liked each other or not at the end of the novel was true to those characters. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter how I would have reacted in that situation. It, it matters how they would have acted honestly and in, in all truth to each other. And I think that's how the book ended, and I think it ended beautifully, and I was very, very happy with everything about this. I gave it a 5 out of 5, I gave it 100%, and I thought it was fantastic. So if you guys have read this book, put in your comment section below what you thought. I love you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.